This is the Read to Lead podcast, episode 539. Hello there. Welcome back to another episode of the Read to Lead podcast, where we explore strategies and insights to maximize your reading experience and your personal development. I'm Jeff, your host, and today we're diving into an intriguing topic, at least I think it is, that can transform the way you approach your reading. It's called interleaving books. Have you ever found yourself stuck with a book that just didn't seem to be going anywhere? You pick it up hoping to power through the book, but instead it feels like you're wading through molasses, for example. Well, we've all been there and it can be incredibly frustrating, especially when you have a pile of unread books waiting for you. Those books on the shelf that call your name every time you walk by, and you feel that little tinge of guilt. But what if I told you there's a way to keep your reading momentum going without abandoning books altogether? Well, that's where the idea of interleaving books comes in. It's a concept that suggests reading multiple books at the same time. I would say three to five is best. And switching between them regularly to keep things fresh and exciting is the way to go. This isn't about multitasking, though. It's about maximizing engagement and your motivation. So, Let's explore how this works and why it might be just what you need to reignite your love for reading. Well, let's first acknowledge why we sometimes hit a wall with our reading. There are several reasons. Some books are dense, requiring more cognitive effort to understand, while others might be a bit dry or less engaging than we hoped. These hurdles can make reading feel like a chore rather than the joyful thing it's supposed to be. And when we encounter these challenges, our motivation can take a hit. At times, you might decide that a book isn't worth finishing, and that's perfectly okay, but other times, this dip in motivation can lead to an unfortunate outcome, and that is we stop reading altogether. It's sad to think that a single difficult book can deter us from all the other adventures waiting on our shelves. So what is interleaving? Well, interleaving is a method that can help mitigate some of these challenges. The idea is simple. Instead of committing to one book at a time, you read several books concurrently, and you can switch between them based on your mood, your interest, or level of engagement at any given moment. Think of it as a buffet of books. You sample a bit of one dish, then you move on to the next, savoring a variety of flavors without overloading on a single one. This approach can keep your reading experience fresh and engaging, allowing you to approach each book with renewed interest. Some of the benefits of interleaving books include increased motivation. I hinted at that a moment ago. By allowing yourself the flexibility to switch books, you can avoid the motivation slump that often comes with a single challenging book. If one book feels tedious, say you can pivot to another that might reignite your enthusiasm. Another benefit is broader learning. Interleaving can expose you to diverse ideas and perspectives in a shorter span of time. You might read a historical nonfiction book alongside a business strategy guide or a sci-fi novel, gaining insights from each genre that might influence how you think about the others. This is where those serendipitous moments can arise, those opportunities for seemingly disparate ideas to crash into one another, as I like to say. Another benefit is better attention. Interestingly, switching contexts can actually improve memory retention. When you engage with different topics, your brain works harder to connect the dots, which can lead to deeper understanding and recall. And a fourth benefit is simply joyful reading. Ultimately, interleaving should enhance your enjoyment of reading. It removes the pressure to finish a book that isn't resonating with you at the moment and instead lets you focus on the books that are speaking to you. So how do you start interleaving books? Here's a simple guide. First, choose your books. Start with a selection of three and no more than five, I would say. And aim for a variety, different genres, subjects, even writing styles to keep things interesting. You might choose a mix of even fiction and nonfiction. I I tend to stick with nonfiction, but don't be afraid to mix those. But what I do do is include different book formats. By that, I mean I might be reading a physical book alongside an ebook, alongside an audiobook. They don't all have to be in the same format, in other words. And switch as needed. There are no hard rules about when to switch. Do it whenever you feel your attention waning or your curiosity pulling you toward another book. 
It's all about keeping the experience enjoyable and engaging. That's that's why we, we're drawn to reading in the first place, right? If it's not enjoyable and engaging any longer, we're doing it wrong. And that's the issue I'm trying to address here. Another part of the process is to take notes to avoid losing context when you return to a book after a break. Take notes as you read, summarize you know the key points or jot down questions that arise along the way, and then refer to those, especially what you wrote most recently in your notes before jumping back into a book. That'll help refresh your memory and allow you to dive back into the book pretty easily. The next step is this. If you're someone who loves organizing information, consider using a personal knowledge management system. I recommend a tool like Obsidian. There's also Notion, Evernote, many other tools that can help you capture notes, extract concepts, and connect ideas from different books together, creating, in the process, a rich tapestry of knowledge. I talk more about this in the course I created around personal knowledge management called Note Making Mastery. You can find out more about that at jeffbrown.me. And then embrace flexibility. Remember, the goal is to enjoy reading. If you find that a particular book still isn't capturing your interest, After several tries, it's okay to set it aside permanently. Reading, again, should be a pleasure and not a chore. Now, in my own journey, I've found that interleaving books has has been a game changer. I've managed to finish more books, around 55 to 65 a year on average, and have found new connections between seemingly unrelated topics. That's where new ideas can crash into existing ideas in your PKM, your personal knowledge management system from those notes you've taken. Reading a book, say, on behavioral psychology alongside a book on artificial intelligence might spark ideas about how technology influences human behavior, for example. Here are a few tips I've picked up along the way. Mix up the formats. As I said before, don't be afraid to combine physical books with ebooks and audiobooks because this adds an extra layer of flexibility and can fit different parts of your day. Listening to an audiobook during your commute or reading a paperback, say, in the evening. Be mindful of your mood. Pay attention to how you're feeling. If you're tired, a light novel might be more appealing than a dense academic type text. Tailor your reading to your current state of mind. In other words, set many goals. M I N I, not M A N Y. <laughs> Instead of aiming to finish a book in, in one go, set smaller achievable goals like reading a chapter or two at a time. And this can help maintain a a sense of accomplishment and progress. And I will add, if you're someone who struggles with setting seemingly small goals like reading a chapter, then know you're not alone. It's easy for me to sit down and decide I'm going to read a chapter and then get lost in thought or find I'm taking lots of notes and 90 minutes has transpired and I'm still not finished with the chapter, but my available reading time has expired. It can be frustrating. So when I set M-I-N-I, many goals, often what I'll do is simply say, I'm going to read for 25 or 30 minutes, or I'm going to read for 50 minutes or one hour. And then I allow myself to do whatever reading I can get done in that allotted time. And if I've read for the amount of time I set as a goal, then that goal has been achieved without concern for how much reading I did during that time. So try that if you struggle with setting many goals. And embrace serendipity. Sometimes the best insights come from unexpected places. So allow yourself to be surprised by where different books might lead you. Now, I want you to be aware of some potential challenges that interleaving books can present. You might find it difficult, say, to keep track of multiple narratives or concepts, especially if you leave a book for too long. But with practice and some of that strategic note-taking I talked about, I think these challenges can be easily managed. But another potential downside is the temptation to abandon books too quickly. And while it's important to recognize when a book truly isn't worth your time, be mindful of the reasons behind your decision. Are you giving up too soon or is it genuinely not resonating with you? Striking that balance is is key. In the end, interleaving books can be a powerful way to maintain your reading momentum and explore a wider range of ideas. It's a strategy that embraces flexibility and curiosity, allowing you to navigate the vast world of books with enthusiasm and joy. 
So why not give it a try? Pick a few books, mix things up, and see how this approach transforms your reading experience. And I'd love to hear how it works for you and any insights that you gain along the way. You can write me at jeff at readtoleadpodcast.com. Thanks for joining me on this journey into the world of interleaving books. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the podcast and share it with fellow book lovers. And until next time, remember, leaders read and readers lead. Oh, 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 oh